As I said, I've been uh, in touch with our CEO at DFW, Sean Donahue, all afternoon regarding the ongoing situation. Uh, if you don't know, I, I sit on the DFW Airport Board, uh, and the DFW Airport is owned by the City of Dallas with Fort Worth. Uh, and so this is happening on City of Dallas uh, uh, land. Um, I, as mayor of Dallas, an airport member and a citizen of this great country, uh, I'm deeply distressed with what happened uh, this afternoon and what we're seeing unfolding across uh, the country um, as a result of the president's executive action. But first, let me relay the facts that I've been told, and, uh, and maybe you can match them up with what you're hearing as well. My understanding is the result of the president's executive order banning refugees and anyone from those certain countries um, the traveling on inbound uh, flights uh, from sp certain countries, uh, many people have been detained uh, and are still at DFW. The Emirates flight got in first, uh, and what I was told was nine individuals uh, were kept from entering the United States. The um, uh, Etihad flight uh, is supposed to have gotten in by now, and they're still sorting out the individuals. Uh, our CEO estimates that it will be less than 20 individuals uh, that uh, will be uh, detained. And what they have been told is they're not getting into the United States and they are catching the flight uh, back to their countries when that flight leaves. Some of the flights, uh, the Emirates flight, got there turn around and left, and in the interim, those people were stuck, so they'll catch the flight back tomorrow. Um, those numbers that I've given you are, are kind of uh, uh, general guesses right now. They're not specific, uh, but that gives you kind of an idea of where we've got. We don't know the, um, the specific uh, demographies or the countries or the purposes of these individuals. We do not believe there are any refugees coming to Dallas. Uh, we have checked with the, the large refugee organizations. I just spoke to Catholic Charities, and uh, they said they didn't expect any refugees coming uh, in uh, the country uh, and coming to Dallas this weekend. So these are other individuals that caught up, got caught up in this executive order. Uh, maybe, uh, excuse me. Uh, obviously, people that are coming to see families, uh, some of these families uh, are elderly and uh, their children are coming, or uh, business individuals. Uh, we're very proud, I just want to tell you right now, of our uh, relationship with Emirates, with uh, Etihad, and with Qatar. Uh, Qatar doesn't have a Saturday flight, so Qatar uh, didn't get caught up into this as well. Um, I have been assured that DFW Airport is doing everything it is allowed to do to make sure that uh, those individuals uh, are taken care of in regards of sleeping conditions. They're bringing cots, blankets, uh, food, water, any necessary supplies that are taking place uh, that, that they need. Um, the airports are, are giving the information to the families. So we're trying to keep them, uh, uh, make sure that they've got the necessary supplies. The customs folks are keeping them detained uh, and not uh, letting access to those individuals in the airport. The airlines themselves are talking to the families. Um, we anticipate that this issue of the travelers uh, being detained at the airport will diminish in the coming days. Um, I think these individuals and the airlines got caught up in the quickness of this. There was no warning that uh, in three days this will happen. It was immediate, and uh, we, we don't believe that these uh, travelers will be caught in limbo um, in, in the coming days, but we'll, uh, we'll see. Um, now let me kind of talk about my reaction uh, to what is going on. Uh, first, the President's executive or action 
purports to be a response to national security, that we are not safe. If I believe that, I would be very supportive of this action. That is not true, and we have uh, been uh, very safe in the Dallas area for the last uh, couple of years. This notion that refugees are potential terrorists is uh, uh, at best an exaggeration uh, because we do not have uh, uh, really any evidence that this happens. Um, refugees have to go through extremely rigorous vetting. I've learned kind of what it takes uh, uh, to make it happen. It takes from any place from 18 to 36 months, and I know that we have not had any public safety issues in those regards. Uh, I've worked closely with refugee agencies and uh, here in Dallas, and to a organization, they have convinced me that uh, these individuals uh, are, are going to be good members of our community. Um, in fact, 800,000 refugees have been admitted to the United States since 9-11. None of them has acted, uh, has committed an act of terrorism on the United States soil. Um, second, let's remember that uh, this is not just a political issue. It's a human issue. It's a human issue where uh, families are being kept apart people that have uh, legal visas to get into the United States to uh, be with their families or to do business is, uh, uh, is, is, are being kept from doing that. Um, look, uh, there are really kind of two aspects of this that hurt us. First of all, I think from a business standpoint, we are doing everything we can to become an international business center. I believe in the coming decades we can be the international business center for the Western Hemisphere. We connect Asia uh, and uh, the Middle East and Europe and South America with all these flights coming in. And this uh, move sends a clear signal that uh, uh, not so fast. We don't want to have your business. And that is concerning to me. As I said, um, this policy will exacerbate uh, the suffering of uh, an estimated 60,000 vulnerable refugees have been, that have been uh, vetted uh, tremendously. I love the notion that somehow we're going, to, we're going to vet them better, like the vetting in the past has not worked. The facts do not show that, and this is a, a, a one of many strings of, uh, of lies that are being given to the, uh, the citizens of the United States. The first job of a mayor is to make sure that we are safe. I want to be safe. And if I didn't think we were safe, I wouldn't be standing up in here and doing this. But this is political. This is to send a signal to, uh, uh, to the United States that uh, um, I did what I promised you, and he shouldn't have promised it in the first place. So I am uh, very, very uh, sad about uh, what this does for Dallas, because Dallas is not this sort of city. Lastly, on a personal note, I am a Christian and a Christ follower. This is not a Christ action. This is not what the gospel preaches. And as uh, the new Bishop Burns just told me, he said, Joseph and Mary had to go to another land for Jesus to be born in, and somebody had to take them in. And to make this a political issue, when we try to live out our faith every day, I think it's important for Christians to speak in a loud voice to our president and say, that's not the spirit that we want our country to take. Because we have a different spirit. We have a spirit where we help our strangers, we help our neighbors. And so I believe that on many, many fronts, 
This is ill thought out, it's bad policy, it's bad for business, it's bad for families, it's bad for cities, and it's bad for the heart. We as people are defined not by how we treat ourselves, but how we treat the other. Today is a great failing of America in that regards.